Hello everyone, my name is Alex, this is the Pokemon Connection, and I have a little special sort of treat for you guys today. Uh, first of all, I'm glad to be back on the channel, and I apologize to anyone who thought I was being unclear or indefinite in my previous video. Um, I'm just not sure how my schedule is going to be over the next couple months, and once I gain knowledge about, on how it's going to turn out, I'll inform you guys and let you know what I have in store uh, for you guys. Anyways, October the 7th is one month away from today, and on that day, the release of the sequel to Pokemon Black and White, Pokemon Black and White 2, is um, scheduled. And uh, I'm really excited for it. I think you guys must have that date circled on your calendars, because I'd imagine you guys are pretty excited for it too. So here's a little what to expect from the, uh, the games. Alright, so the way I'm going to do this is divide it down into various segments of prediction and analysis of Pokemon Black and White 2, starting with plot. Um, the plot of all Pokemon games is fairly similar. You're given a Pokedex, told to go off on some journey to find all the Pokemon, record data, blah 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 blah. You create a team of six creatures, Pokemon, whatever. You battle all eight gym leaders, make it your way to the Elite Four, beat the Elite Four, face the champion, become the champion, and that's essentially it. And in that respect, not a lot's changed in Pokemon Black and White 2, or so it seems. Um, but in comparison to Black and White 1, there's a fair bit different in the plot, um, despite it taking place in the exact same region. Uh, Unova, that is. So some areas, uh, I've been told, have been drastically changed um, since uh, Black and White 1. Well, Black and White, whatever you want to call them. And... Um, some haven't been changed, and some have been completely removed in general, and some areas have been added. Uh, so, the plot of the story is, I don't want to spoil anything, but I think it's two years have passed since Black and White, the plot of Black and White 1 took place. Uh, you're given a brand new character, you're not the same person. Um, there is new gym leaders as well as old gym leaders. Um, uh, what else? So, because there's new areas, and some areas have been removed, and some have been completely changed, there is evidently going to be an entirely different route to the Elite Four than in Black and White. Um, taking you through different towns, new cities, old cities that have been revamped. Um, and your path to Pokemon Unova region supremacy has been a little altered, if you will. Uh, I've also been told there is... Uh, so, okay... Pause the video right now if you don't want any spoilers, but I've been told there is going to be two Team Plasmas, which should generate some pretty interesting uh, conflict. So uh, that's enough about plot. There really isn't much I know besides that. So anyways, here we are into gameplay. Um, so yeah, the gameplay of Pokemon Black and White 2, I mean, guys, I have not watched hardly any um, gameplay of this. or Like, I'm trying to go into it pretty spoiler free although uh, obviously not entirely like i mean i had to do a fair bit of research to give you guys some insight to this um but one of the new and refreshing things added to the pokemon gameplay which is always pretty you know similar to past generations is difficulties yes i mean i've been told that once you beat the elite 4 there is difficulty settings added so you can um, you could play through the game again on a harder difficulty, which is something that's been long awaited amongst longtime Pokemon fans, I'm pretty sure, because, I mean, there's never really games where, if you know what you're doing, it's not that hard to beat a Pokemon game, but I think that's a great and smart addition to, uh, to Black and White 2. I mean, it's gonna, I'm looking forward to trying to play through it in the hardest difficulty. So yeah, I mean, there's always been the Nuzlocke challenge. I don't know if you know what the Nuzlocke challenge is. I mean, different topic for a different day. Or sets of rules, but I think it's so smart, and it's been so long awaited to um, include a difficulty setting. Anyways, back to gameplay. By the way, when I say what to... Like, I, I, I expect this from the game. The game has already been released in Japan. The game has already been released in Japan. So I have not watched Japanese gameplay or gone into it that deep, so I'm just saying, like, from what I've heard, what I've read, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, um, if I use numbers or stats, that is confirmed, by the way. Um, uh, biggest regional decks ever, 300 and some Pokemon, which is really interesting, uh, 
And I was looking at the roots. You have access to some pretty decent Pokemon early on, which raises the question in my brain: advantage, maybe? I mean, like you'd be, you'll be surprised. I mean, you might be surprised if you've already seen uh, gameplay footage and you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, especially in the first couple roots. Uh, take a look there when you get the game, if you get the game. Hopefully you get the game. Anyways, uh, pretty extensive legendaries list. 17 or 18, somewhere in there. Uh, less than 20, I think. Uh, the version exclusives, Pokemon you can only get in one of the two games, aren't anything worth mulling over. I mean, don't get one of the two games because of the version exclusives. I mean, unless you love that one Pokemon and you can't get it in your game. But it's it's nothing, really. Uh, daily events, weekly events, seasonal events, increasing... Um, uh, not replay value, well, sort of. But, I mean, increasing playable value every day. So there's something different going on every day, every week, every month, every season, wanting people to uh, play more. And on top of that note, wanting people to play more, an achievement system has been added to Pokemon games, which is so cool. I mean, achievements like medals, like trophies in PlayStation 3 or gamer points in Xbox. Like, you actually get, like, little medals for completing various tasks in a Pokemon game. So, like... There might be one for beating all eight gym leaders, or as simple as catching your first Pokemon, to as complex and uh, challenging as capturing all the Pokemon. So I think it's a pretty, pretty interesting um, addition to the series, uh, to this game, or assuming they carry it over into the next games this series. But um, I think that's a really smart, really great addition, along with the difficulties thing. Those are, from what I've been told and from what I've seen, my two favorite um, new things in Pokemon Black and White. Uh, the difficulties especially is really cool, but the medals is really interesting. So, I mean, I think it, like, I, unless you play the metagame, which is the online against various other trainers, or people, sorry. Um, sometimes they get a little caught up in Pokemon. Um, the, unless you play the metagame, or there's really in most Pokemon games, not enough in the post-game, such as the Battle Frontier, or anything, to, um, to play for that long. Uh, the achievement system builds on top of that. So, let's say you beat the game, don't play the metagame, get bored of the post-game really quickly. Now you have all these achievements to complete. I mean, maybe someone wants to go and achieve them all, I don't know. It's a reason to keep playing the game, which is really cool. Uh, I don't know how many... I have no idea, like, I can't even give you an approximation of how many medals or achievements or whatever they're going to call them are going to be in the game, but I know they're, that they're there. I mean, it's a pretty cool update, if you ask me. Like, I'm just imagining, like, a little medal appearing in the top of your corner, um, saying, like, oh, you just, cap you just caught every, I don't know, normal type Pokemon in the game in the regional decks. So, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, along with that, difficulties should be uh, pretty interesting and pretty uh, fun to play. So, <clears throat> that's it for gameplay, and I'm going to move over into our next little category topic thing, which is extra features. Now, extra features, I'm kind of focusing on the post-game. And um, by extra features, I just mean stuff, like stuff that's there that's not part of the main plot. And um, speaking of extra features, Michael actually has a video, and wham, there's an achievement, or achievement. Hung over on the achievement thing, eh? Uh, there's an annotation for it right there. Um, so yeah, he can give you a accurate definition of what an extra feature is, because I can't. But it's just stuff that's not part of the main plot. Anyways, extra features for this game. Uh, there's going to be a regular Battle Frontier, or Battle Tower, or something, like there always is. Uh, I hear there's something where you can fi fight all the gym leaders from any Pokemon game ever, plus the Elite Four and Champions. It's called Tournament Mode or something. That's going to be really awesome. Um, what else? There's something called Join Avenue. And this is really interesting. I I'm not too excited for it, but I think I might love it. I might dislike it. I might not even care about it. Uh, it's a, like a little place. I forget which city it's in. But you become the co-manager of a store. And you can invite players you've connected with via trade or battle to help you maintain the store, and as your store progresses, you get more items in the store that are unaccessible anywhere else in the game, so it should be interesting. There's also a new Pokedex mode called Habitat Mode, um, I don't really, that's not that big a deal, I mean, it's just some 
uh, way of checking off different routes and areas once you've obtained all the Pokemon that are accessible in those areas. Uh, and the last thing I want to touch up on is this thing called Hidden Grottoes, which I think are just some area to obtain new items or new Pokemon, and they're in trees, I think? I have no idea. Hidden Grottoes. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's extra features. And graphics. Now, don't expect a whole lot of difference in graphics between Pokemon Black and White and Pokemon Black and White, too. I mean, most likely, if you've looked it up or followed Pokemon at all, or anything, you've seen some form of a screenshot, some form of a, um, video. The overworld, especially, is nearly identical, but I hear there are some videos, such as the one I have screened right now, and I have that thing in the right corner blacked out, because that may be a spoiler, and I don't want to ruin anything for you guys. Um, so don't pay attention to that, if you can see through the black. But anyways, graphics will be almost entirely the same, except I hear there are some pretty cool animations and little short clips, um, which are pretty interesting and uh, look pretty nice, I've heard. So uh, that should be uh, great. Anyways, guys, the, thanks for watching, by the way. That's my little what to expect or what I've heard or what I know of Black and White 2, which comes out one month from today. So, yeah, I hope you uh, purchase the game, and I hope I'm able to make um, some form of another video about it. I mean, I'm not saying a walkthrough of the game or anything, because, like I said, no um, no idea what my uh, availability is going to be like to uh, put out videos frequently. But I definitely have the intentions of uploading, and I mean, I like uploading. It's, it's fun. But, yeah, that's my... Uh, black and white review, not review, uh, what to expect, or what I, like, what I've been told, what I know is going to be there, or what I've heard is going to be there, or what I think is going to be there, well, not a whole lot of the latter, but, anyways, um, should be a great game, I'm really looking forward to playing it, um, and I mean, 649 now, guys, that's how many Pokemon there are, so after this, as l much as I love new Pokemon games, I'm not really entirely certain if I want another new group of 150 approximately Pokemon. Like, it's just, it's just so many Pokemon. I mean, like, add another 150 on top of that, that's around 800, sorry. Which is ridiculous. Can you imagine 800 Pokemon? A game where you could make a team... Like, in the metagame especially, out of 800 Pokemon, or just having to know 800 Pokemon or have them memorized, I don't know. It's just a lot. I'm kind of hoping for a Ruby Sapphire Gen 3 remake, which would be pretty awesome. And, uh, I think they'll, they're they going to continue to make Pokemon stuff as long as people buy it, which, can't say, uh, I'll see you, I see you guys uh, stopping buying them anytime soon. So, thanks for watching, guys. That's my little what to expect from Pokemon Black and White 2 coming out one month from today on October the 7th. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a great day. Oh, and hey, guys. Uh, I just realized after um, making the video that while I was talking about plot, I didn't talk about the ice that um, appeared over the Unova region. Uh because I was looking at notes and stuff about what I was going to say for plot. I didn't really realize that I had that picture up on the uh, screen like I meant to. But, um, so yeah, that's something that's left me kind of puzzled. I mean, that could mean that the areas that are under it are just unacces inaccessible, or maybe it means that you there, a good portion of the game is you're going through things that have been either A, frozen over, or B, I don't know what else, but... Yeah, so, sorry for uh, forgetting to mention that, or include that, but anyways, uh, if you skip back to the uh, part where I cover plot, th the picture on screen is, there is ice, and that was released by Nintendo or Game Freak, um, and yeah, so, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide what that means and what that represents, um, and I guess we'll all find out October 7th, so, um, yeah. Bye again, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time when I upload something. Bye.